Today, we will talk about IB Math Pass Paper, AA Standard Level, Paper 1, time shown 1 May 2021. First, we look at Section A, Question 1. A graph of fx is shown in the diagram. In Part A, we need to find f2. That means we need to find the y-coordinate of the graph when x is 2. So, for x is 2, the point of the graph lies here and the y-coordinate is 6. After that, we need to find ff2. As we know that f2 is 6, we can just simply substitute it into the function. So, ff2 is just f6, and we look at x equal to 6, the point is here, and the y-coordinate is negative 2. Done. So far, the questions are easy. And then, in part b, it gives us another function g which is related to the previous function f. This is a question about transformation of graph. gx is equal to half fx plus 1. So, it consists of two transformations. First, we need to consider half fx. Since it is a constant multiplying fx, it is a vertical stretch with a scale factor half. That means the distance between the x-axis and all the points of the function f will be half. Distance 4 becomes 2, 6 becomes 3, 0 stays 0, and so on. After the first change, we need to add 1 to the function. That means move the line up by 1 unit, and we get the final answer. Second question, part A. The diameter of sphere is this, and we need to find the radius. Easy, just divide it by 2. Part B. It gives us the volume and asks us for A and K. So, we need to set up an equation and then solve it. By the formula of sphere volume, we set 4 over 3 pi r cubed equal to this, and then substitute r into it. We can cancel the pi on both sides, do some cancellation, and change the left hand side into standard form. Finally, we compare the form on both sides and we get the final answers. Question 3. Here is an arithmetic sequence where the 8th term and the sum of the first 8 terms are also 8. We need to find the first term and the common difference. Obviously, we need to set some equations by this. By the general formula of AS, un is u1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Then, we can substitute 8 for un and n. After simplifying it, we get one equation. And then, by the general formula of arithmetic series, we have sn equal to u1 plus un divided by 2 times n. Of course, then we do substitution for n and sn again. After simplification, we can get the second equation. Now, we just need to solve simultaneous equations. Use the tricks we learned from middle school. We can get d is 2 and u1 is negative 6. Question 4. Here is a box and whisker diagram. Lower quartile and upper quartile are unknowns, but minimum, median, and maximum are given. The interquartile range is 20, and there is no outlier. Part A. We need to find the minimum possible value of the upper quartile. As there is no outlier, the maximum 75 must not be greater than the upper bound of the data. So, upper bound is equal to the upper quartile plus 1.5 interquartile range, which must be greater than 75. After we set the inequality, we can solve it and we can get the minimum possible value of u is 45. Part B. We need to find the possible value of the lower quartile. As the interquartile range is 20, the lower quartile is just the upper quartile minus that, which is 25. Question 5. Function f is this, function g is this. And for part a, we need to find f dot x. So, we just differentiate it. For the first term, we need to use power rule, put the index number in front, and subtract it by 1. So, we get negative 2 bracket x minus h. Of course, by chain rule, 
we need to multiply it by the derivative of the things inside the bracket. Anyway, it is just one, so no change. Then, for the second term, it is just a constant, so it disappears after differentiation. Part B. F and G have common tangent at x equals 3. This is a very common type of questions in calculus. Common tangent means that their slopes are the same at that point. So, f dot 3 is equal to g dot 3. Also, they touch at that point. So, f 3 is equal to g 3. We need to show h equal to something. So, we find g dot x first, and then we substitute 3 for x. As we find f dot x in part a, we can also put 3 into it. Set them equal to each other, solve it, and done. Part C. So k is equal to something. Obviously, we need to use the second equation we wrote. f3 is equal to g3. By substitution, we can get g3 and f3. Set them equal to each other. Without making calculus mistake, we find k. Question 6. Trigonometry. We need to show something at the same. For this kind of identity questions, we always start the question from the complicated side. For this question, left hand side is more complicated, as there are two x inside sine and cosine, but just single x on the right hand side. We should use double angle formula to break the terms in the left hand side. So, for sine 2x, we can change it to 2 sine x cosine x. But for cosine 2x, there are three ways to change it. So, which one should we use? We also need to consider the right hand side. After we expand it, we find that the 2 sine x cosine x part are the same. And the only difference is the negative 2 sine square part. So, we better choose the way containing 2 sine square x. After replacing the cosine 2x and do some simple calculation, we can show that both sides are the same. Part B. Solving trigonometric equation. Obviously, we need to change the left hand side thing by part A's identity. And after that, we need to have good observation. Cosine x minus sine x are the common factor for the front and the later parts, so we can factorize it. By new factor rule, cosine x is equal to sine x, and 2 sine x plus 1 is equal to 0. We can get tangent x equals 1 and sine x equals negative half. As we should remember the trigonometric value from 0 to 90 degrees, we can find the first solution. I call it solution A, and I have a tricky way to find the second solution from 0 to 2 pi. I call it solution B. Then, the four solutions can be found easily. Question 7. fx is this, and there is a straight line meets f at exactly one point. For part A, just like the previous question, when we see the word intersect or meet, we just set the equation to be the same. And we can get mx squared minus 3mx plus 9. They only meet at one point means that there is only one solution for this quadratic equation. So the discriminant for this is 0. Discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And by substitution, we get another quadratic equation in terms of m. Factorize it by taking out the common factor 9m. Finally, we get m equals 0, but if m is 0, f is 0, so not possible. That means m can only be 4. Part B. We need to make f to be the factorized form. By substituting 4 for m, we have fx equals 4x squared minus 8x. Factorize it by taking common factor 4x, we get x equals 0 and q equals 8. Part C. 
we need to change F to be the furthest form. That means we need to apply the skill we learned in computing the square. Taking out the leading coefficient, negative 4, we have x squared minus 2x inside the bracket. And we need to add the square of the coefficient of the x term. Finally, balance it by minus, by, by minus 4 outside the bracket. Applying the a plus b squared identity, we can change the things inside the bracket to be x minus 1 squared. And done. We get x equals 1 and k equals negative 4. Part D. We need to consider f is negative and increasing. First, set f to be smaller than 0. We get an inequality. And simplifying it to be x minus 1 squared is smaller than 1. So, x minus 1 is between negative 1 and 1. And thus, x is between 0 and 2. After that, we consider f is increasing. That means f dot x is greater than 0. Its derivative is just 8 bracket x minus 1. After solve it, we get x is greater than 1. Combining the two inequalities, we conclude that x is between 1 and 2. Question 8. Part A. We need to differentiate y. By quotient rule, d the upper part times the lower part minus the upper part times the derivative of the lower part. And then, divide it by the lower part square. After that, we just need to factorize the numerator and simplify the expression. Then, we get the answer. Part B. Horizontal tangent means that the slope at that point is zero. So, we set the derivative of f to be zero. After simplifying it, we get lateral naught x equals one fourth. So, x is e to the power one fourth. Then, we substitute it back to f. And we get y equals one over four e. After we find the coordinates of p, we go to part c. And the double derivative is given. We need to show that p is no co-maximum. Needless to say, we put p into the second derivative. After calculation, we get negative 4 over e to the power something. As the denominator is positive and the numerator is negative, the second derivative at p is negative. That means it is concave down around p. So, p is a local maximum. Part D. We set fx to be greater than 0. As x to the power 4 must be positive, we can cancel it. And we get natural naught x to be greater than 0. That means x must be greater than 1. For part E, finally we need to sketch f. We mark p first. By looking at its coordinates, it must be in the first quadrant. Its x-intercept is 1. And it is only positive after 1. So, is negative before 1 and it obtains p afterwards. After that, it turns back and keeps decreasing but never touch the x acid again. Final question 9. Here is a probability distribution table for x. Part A We need to find p. As the probability of all the situations add together must be 1, we can simply make the equation and get p equals 2 over 7. Part b. We need to find the expected value of x. That means we need to add all the values multiplying their own probability together. So we get 8p which is 16 over 7. Part c. We need to find r as probability of any situation or all the situations must be between 0 and 1. So does R. Similarly, we have VQ between 0 and 1. And thus, Q is between 0 and 1 third. Part D, we want to find the expected value of Y. Similar to Part B, we add all the values multiplying their own probability together and we get 6q plus 4r. Then we stuck, since there is no way for us to tell the range of ey. 
What should we do? Here is always the trick of probability question in IB. As what I mentioned in part A, add the probability of all the situations together must be 1. We have VQ plus R equal to 1. So, now we can make R in terms of Q and substitute it back to EY. Finally, we have EY equals 4 minus 6Q. As we know, Q is between 0 and 1 third. So, we substitute 0 for Q. We can get the upper bound 4 and we substitute 1 third for Q. We get the lower bound 2. For question E, we need to find the expected value of Y. It is a very tricky question. The probability of A is less than B by half. So, we need to make an equation by this sentence. We look at the tables above. What are the situations that A score is less than B score? A guess 1 and B guess 2, 3, 4. Or A guess 2 and B guess 3, 4. Or A guess 3 and B guess 4. So, in total, there are 6 situations. We need to list these 6 cases and try to add the probability of them together. For example, a guess 1 score, the probability is P. For B guess 2, 3, 4, the probability is 2P plus R. Then, we multiply them, and we consider the other situations as well. Finally, we get P times 3Q plus 3R. As we know, P is 2 over 7, and R is 1 minus 3Q. Finally, we can get 6 over 7 times 1 minus 2q. This is the expression for the probability that A score is less than B score. And by the sentence above, we know that it is equal to half. So, we set it to be half and we get our equation. Solve it and we get q equals 5 over 24. So, we can substitute it back to the expected value of y we find in part d. After tons of work, we get 11 over 4. We have gone through all the questions in this paper already. Thank you for watching. If you like it or want to know more, please like and subscribe my channel. Bye bye.